and welcome to a new video. So if you don't know me, I'm Estelle Designs, both here on YouTube and Instagram, and I make fantasy costumes. In this one, I'm going to be going through how I made Elle Fanning's green dress from the Maleficent 2 premiere. Now this is a dress that she wore and immediately I fell in love with it. It's a beautiful green silk fabric and the design is actually custom by Gucci. I do have my iPad down here, which has all of my close friends' stories um, in my Instagram story highlights. Um, so on my close friends, this is where I post all of the real-time detailed sewing progress of my projects, and then I just store all of those in my uh, story highlights on my Instagram. So I've got, I think, several different parts I think there's four different story highlights of this project, so quite lengthy, um, but this will just be a general overview of the project, um, how I made the dress, what fabrics I used, that sort of thing. So if you're more interested in the actual details, in the pattern, in how I construct it from start to finish, um, then definitely check out my Patreon and my close friend stories on Instagram. I started with doing a sketch. Um, I usually do this for my projects. Um, and this just gives me a general idea of how I feel the garment will go together. I'll write some notes around different fabrics, the structure, um, different closure methods, and it just gets that thinking process started. Then I obviously move on to choosing out my fabrics. Um, I bought all of my fabrics from Homecraft Textiles and because they're a store based in Perth, I had to purchase them online. So I did a lot of like screen capping of the images from the website, comparing it to any images I found of Elle Fanning's dress on Google. And it was a lot of back and forth of like, hmm, what would work? And hers is a very like muted, desaturated sort of green, but it still has a bit of color. Um, I chose the chiffon fabric that I felt was the most similar to hers, which was an avocado green, that's what it's called. And then as for the teal underlay, um, I picked a Tiffany blue um, chiffon. So I just picked um, quite affordable polyester chiffon, but obviously Elle Fanning's dress would have been made out of real silk chiffon. Um, so the, the way that hers drapes is a lot nicer than mine, but I think I did pretty well considering um, that I was working on a pretty tight budget. So that was the fabrics. And then obviously I needed to also get a lot of flowers. Now I've done flower dresses in the past. Um, I'm not new to Aurora dresses whatsoever. And um, my go-to place has always been AliExpress. So that's what I did. Um, type in artificial flowers and basically just go searching for days. And again, there's a lot of back and forth between what I can see on her dress versus what's available through AliExpress. And I bought a whole bunch of different flowers. I tried to keep them in the same sort of color scheme. So a lot of like white, pink, purple, um, a bit of that faded blue. So lots of different colors. And I think that was, apart from uh, one other fabric that I got for the bodice structure, um, that was it for fabrics. And then other details that I got included some rhinestone trim and also ribbon. Both of those, again, from AliExpress. I also picked up some coral dye because I needed the teal underlay fabric to be a lot more desaturated. And um, there were actually some people on my Instagram account who recommended using a, an opposite color dye to desaturate the color of the fabric. So that's what I did there. Um, I did a lot of tests um, with the dyeing and I'm so glad I did. I desaturated the color of the fabric. So we'll move on to the actual construction of the dress. I knew that I wanted to have a corset structure as the base and build on top of that because that would really provide the, um, basically the foundations needed um, for the dress and keep it up and keep it in that nice, uh, nice form fitting shape to the body. So I started with a corset pattern, um, I think, I think this is a is one that I've modified off a corset pattern from many years ago. Uh, my body shape has changed and I also wanted something that was a bit more comfortable and uh, would be comfortable for me to wear now. So I ended up picking a fabric from Silkworld Fabrics. They're a bridal fabric store in Melbourne and I got a cotton mesh fabric and I thought 
why not try this to make the corselet um, as it's called um, for the structure of this of this dress and um, it was my first time working with this fabric it's got quite a bit of stretch to it which I don't think I was expecting um, and it's also quite a loose weave as well so um, I used two layers of it and then for the braiding channels I just used cotton tape and that seemed to work relatively okay um, it really was just an experiment to try out working with different fabrics because until this project I always made corsets using straight up cotton and making the boning channels within those um, within the cotton fabric itself rather than using separate cotton tape. I used um, spiral steel boning along all of the curved um, all of the curved seams and then as for the center front and the center back I used just straight steel. Like I said, this was a bit of an experiment of a project, so I wanted to insert bust cups into the corset, so I did that. I pinned them in and then I sewed them down just under the sewing machine. And originally I was going to put in eyelets in the back of the corset, but I decided it was just way too hard with this cotton mesh fabric, so I ended up just doing a zipper instead. Um, I was very unlucky with this zipper and I had to put it in three times before I got it right. But eventually I got there and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not my greatest work, but it will do. So when it came to cutting out the fabrics, I didn't use a pattern. I knew that it was just going to be draped onto the corset anyway and all gathered down. So I just worked with rectangles and then any off cuts that I had. So any of those triangle off cuts from when cutting the fabric, I would just use those and insert those into the skirt to make the skirt more full. I then started draping the fabrics onto the corset. I sewed it all along the top edge of the corset and then when it came to the waist, I hand gathered that down with a needle and thread. There was a lot of gathering along the top edge of the corset, so I went very carefully using a lot of pins, um, a lot of gathering stitches really, and um, just trying to get the effect that I wanted. So evening out the gathers until I got it into the right position. As for where the zipper was, I just cut a slit in the chiffon fabrics of where I knew the zipper would go, turned under the chiffon fabric so there would be no raw edges and then sewed that down. I did a bit of a mixture between machine sewn and hand sewn just because there were some areas that were a bit difficult to get under the sewing machine. After all of the top is sewn down, I flipped it right side out Obviously trim the seam allowance as well, tidy that up as well. Um, and also don't forget to understitch. I started gathering at the waist with some hand stitching. And this was something that took a very long time because I just wanted to get the gathers quite narrow and small, um, just so it had that nice, like almost pleating effect. Um, yeah, so I had to keep those gathers quite small, but also I was working with two layers of chiffon. And because my chiffon isn't nearly as um, silky as like real silk chiffon. Um, it was very difficult to get the gathers laying nice and smooth. It did feel a little bit puffy, um, but I think ironing it later on and applying a lot of steam helped with that. So moving on to the sleeves, I made the base layer of the sleeves out of a nice cotton voile fabric that I had because I didn't want any scratchy chiffon up against my arms. I just don't like the feeling of that. So I started with making the base. It's just rectangles, very wide rectangles because the sleeves are very puffy. And I sewed just channels into horizontally into the sleeves. So one for the top, um, where the sleeve is, one for the elbow, like where the elbow is, and then obviously one at the wrist. So I then cut out the rectangles much wider for the chiffon fabric um, for the sleeves. And I also sewed in gathering stitches along matching up where those channels are on the cotton sleeve. I sewed the chiffon to the top of the cotton lining and I did, did that for both the, um, both the layers. So there was the teal layer and then also the green chiffon layer that went over the top. So I did that and then afterwards um, I then sewed down where the gathering stitches were along each of those points. So the top, the middle section and the wrist. So you can sort of see the process of getting that sleeve together. So for the end of the sleeve, I just did a simple rolled hem, I think. No, I didn't. At the end of the sleeve, I actually just did a zigzag stitch because um, on 
the original dress, I think they left the edges raw um, to have that nice ethereal fairy aesthetic um, effect. So that's also what I did is I just zigzag stitched the edges and trimmed off any threads that were coming quite loose. Now we're on to flower surgery. So all of the flowers that I got from AliExpress, they had, they always come with a bit of plastic or glue or felt backings and I don't like any of that stuff. So I trimmed away all of that. So picked and picked them apart. So anywhere there was, where there was glue and there was plastic, I would pull all of that apart because all I want is the fabric. I just want the fabric of the flowers. I also at this stage attached the rhinestone trim to the waist of the dress and I just hand stitched all of that down. I also added some nice purple ribbon to the back to tie it closed in the back. Now that's just a, a little feature that I added. It's not something that was on the original dress, but I liked it and that's what I wanted to do. Sometimes I like to make my designs a bit more me, so any adaptions that I want to make, I will do. I leveled out the hem, so I trimmed off any of the excess fabric at the hem, which was quite a lot at this stage. Um, so that was looking much better. I tried to keep the teal layer a bit longer than the green layer um, because that's also how it was in the original dress. I cut the front of the skirt, so shortened that to make sure it was nice and level with the ground. And I sewed in the gauze on the sides of the skirt. So now it's time to start adding the flowers. Um, really, this was just a process of bunching up the fabric of the flower and positioning it onto the dress where I thought it matched the original. And then once I was happy with that, then I went in and just hand sewed all of the flowers down. So as you can imagine, this took many, many, many hours and a lot of it was done at night time in front of the TV. So nothing out of the ordinary there. So another little feature that I wanted to make sure I added was the leaves um, that accompany the flowers. I felt like the flowers alone, they looked like random splotches on the dress as opposed to flowers. So I cut up this lace that my friend gave to me and I dyed it green since I had some leftover green dye and I thought that would be a nice way to add that texture of the leaves. And I really like the texture that this brought um, to the dress. It was like little crochet leaves and I just think it was such a lovely detail. I also made some little flower accessories. So they were just strips of the leftover chiffon and then I attached some of the flowers that I had left over as well. And I thought it was very Padme, like picnic Padme, but I, I sort of like it. So I gave the dress a good steam and then it was ready to wear to its first photo shoot. And I still to this day have only worn the dress once and that was at this photo shoot. So I went to the Botanic Gardens with the lovely Kai, um, otherwise known as Hikari Productions. And she is such a talented photographer and videographer. Um, and we got some really, really gorgeous photos and videos actually um, of this dress at the Botanic Gardens. So I was so, so, so pleased with how the photos came out. The photos are so beautiful, um, probably one of my favorite photo shoots I've done. Um, and also just so happy that I made something that was yet another dream project, but it was also something that stepped out of the cosplay realm, something that was from the red carpet, something that's that mashup of fashion and fantasy, which is completely my jam. <laughs> and that's really the dress. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll try to get back to you. Like I mentioned in this video, I post all of my really detailed sewing progress to my close friend's stories uh, for Patreon supporters. So if you are interested in that, please do check it out. I'll leave all the links down below. And until next time, stay creative.